This is Representative Bobby Scott from Virginia. Approach 
applying evidence-based strategies uh, for, for those that have risk uh, or at risk to, uh, to, to committing violence. Uh, we start very early with teen pregnancy prevention, so fewer babies are born into, um, in, in, into dysfunctional families. Prenatal care we know can reduce bone retardation and learning disabilities. Um, uh, parental training for new parents, the nurse family partnerships has been studied. Those have a long-term uh, benefit, uh, particularly because they reduce child abuse, which is highly correlated uh, with future crime. Uh, early childhood education and making sure the children can read by the third grade. Uh, teachers tell us up to the third grade, you learn to read. After the third grade, you read to learn. If you can't read by the third grade, you're not going to learn after the third grade, and you're on the way to drop it out. And high school dropouts are at a very high risk of, of, of uh, getting in, in, into trouble. After school programs and constructive things to, for, for them to do and access to college because we found that once we get young people on the job or into college, the crime rate plummets. And so our job is to create a, instead of the cradle to prison pipeline, create a cradle to college and career pipeline. And that can be done with, um, uh, with initiatives involving prevention and early intervention, which is so-called primary prevention which um, starts with um, you know, very early. And we know that um, by getting young people on the right track and keeping them on the right track with healthy lifestyles, we see that many benefits uh, can occur. And so I look, uh, I look forward to hearing the other panelists. <laughs> 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 as, uh, as you know, uh, prevention science is actually a science. It uses a scientific methodology and so follows a scientific approach by examining uh, by applying prevention science to the area of juvenile justice, we know that we can reduce costs, we can effectively reduce crime and save money. Unfortunately, prevention initiatives really have a large political constituency. Those who are lobbying on behalf of a particular issue usually have the problem already. A mental health, for example, they're looking for insurance coverage, educational services, respite care, uh, not as much prenatal care that can significantly reduce the incidence of mental retardation and learning disabilities. Uh, so it is, um, in terms of lobbying, uh, it's just nice to have some people that don't have the problem, are able to get out front and to lobby effectively. And that's why I'm uh, pleased to join my colleague, uh, Tony Cardenas, uh, who formed the Congressional Youth Development and Crime Prevention Caucus. It's important that we um, encourage all of our other members to uh, think in terms of prevention instead of waiting um, uh, for problems to occur and then spending more money. Uh, many of you are old enough to remember the oil filter commercial that ended up that uh, you can pay me now or you can pay me later. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I want to, um, I've got many staff members here. Can you raise your hands, all the staff members? Uh, but there's one who didn't raise his hand and used to be a staff member, uh, Bobby Vassar, that many of you know, who uh, was with me many years. And uh, when I was in the Department of Social Services when we did the, uh, of Virginia, when we uh, created the Council on Prevention. So it's, uh, he's visiting us. Um, he's on several boards and commissions still doing good work. So uh, thank you, and, and, and Neil, thank you for all of your, your hard work in bringing us together. But if we uh, get focused on prevention early intervention, we can solve a lot of problems.